Newt Gingrich, the former Speaker of the House in the United States, said Julian Assange is engaged in warfare, information terrorism, which leads to people getting killed, uh, is terrorism. And Julian Assange is engaged in terrorism. He should be treated as an enemy combatant, and WikiLeaks should be closed down permanently and decisively. Um, Bill Keller of the New York Times said, arrogant, thin-skinned, conspiratorial. Uh, Judith Miller, who together, um, who often wrote or co-wrote articles that appeared on the front page of the New York Times, alleging weapons of mass destruction uh, without named sources, said, Julian Assange isn't a good journalist didn't care at all about attempting to verify the information he was putting out or determine whether or not it would hurt anyone. Joe Biden, the Vice President of the United States, said Julian Assange is a high-tech terrorist. Uh, Congress Member Peter King of New York called for Assange to be charged under the Espionage Act and asked whether WikiLeaks can be designated a terrorist organization. Uh, not to just focus on the U.S. Tom Flanagan, a former aide to the Canadian Prime Minister, has called for Assange's assassination. And former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin called you, uh, Julian, an anti-American operative with blood on your hands. Can you respond to these charges? Well, <clears throat> you, you know, uh, after Bill Keller said that I was thin-skinned, it doesn't really leave much ground to reply, does it? I mean, obviously, the, the, the calls are, are wrong and outrageous and so on, but the social and political event in which they occurred was, was fascinating. So within a few months, we saw a new McCarthyist hysteria arise in the United States in December and January, January this year, December last year. And that is quite worrying, that a new McCarthyism can come up so quickly. On the other hand, yes, there are a lot of opportunistic politicians playing to their base, playing to their pals in the military industrial complex. On the other hand, you know, power that is completely unaccountable is silent. So when, when you walk past a group of ants on the street and you accidentally crush a few, you do not turn to the others uh, and say, stop complaining or I'll put a drone strike on your head. Um, you completely ignore them. And, and that is what happens to power that's in a very dominant position. It does not even bother uh, to respond. It doesn't flinch for an instant. And yet we saw all these figures in the United States coming out and speaking very aggressively. Bill Keller, uh, in a re recent talk, um, as a way of sort of perhaps legitimizing why he was speaking about me, uh, said that if you have a dealing with Julian Assange, you are fated to sit on panels for the rest of your life explaining what you did. But actually, no, that's a choice by Bill Keller a choice to go around and try and twist history and whitewash history and adjust history on a constant basis. Why? Why expend the energy do, doing that? Why not just knock off another front page of the New York Times? Because actually these people are frightened of the true part of history coming up and coming forth. So I, so I see this as a very positive sign. And I, stated before that we should always see censorship actually as a very positive sign and the attempts towards censorship as a sign that the society is not yet completely sewn up, not yet completely fiscalized, but still has some political dimension to it, i.e. what people believe and think and feel and the words that they listen to actually matters. Because in some areas it doesn't matter. And in the United States, actually, most of the time, it doesn't matter what you say. We manage to, to speak and give information at such volume uh, and of such intensity that 
people actually were forced to respond. It is rare that they are forced to respond. So I think this is a, one of the first positive symptoms I've seen from the United States in a while, that, act, that actually if you speak at this level, um, the cage can be rattled a bit and people can be forced to respond. In China, the censorship is much more aggressive, which to me is a very hopeful symptom for China, that it is still a political society, even though it is fiscalizing, even though everything is being sewn up in contractual relationships and banking relationships as time has gone by. At the moment, the Chinese government and public security bureau are actually scared of what people think.